Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support Cat TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station. Item of business is public comments. This is this is uh, sorry, I should say, where this is North Bennington Grade School District Board, um, and present are Doug Bucci, who's the treasurer for North Bennington Grade School District, Kim Crawl, who's a board member, uh, Matthew Patterson, who's the vice chairman, uh, Kiernan McNamara, who's another member, and myself. I'm Ray Mulvill. Chair of the board, and also Lori Orwell, who's the uh, recording secretary and secretary for the district. And uh, Tim Newball wants to be let in. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Tim Newball, who's the, not a member of the board, but he is the, the head of school, of village school. So, um, and so. Having seen no public comments offered, uh, we'll go to finance. Doug, speak to uh, treasurer's report. Sure, absolutely. Um, so everybody has the report. Um, I'll go over it quickly and then answer any questions. Um, as we discussed last month, I think it was the day after we had the meeting I was going to be transferring. So. Uh, the taxes that were transferred was a little over $950,000 um, that the village had collected for school taxes. Um, in December, from the November, there was a little over 2,500 in delinquent taxes. Um, I have a check that will be going in this week from the December delinquent, which was a nice sum, a little over 25,000. Um, from school taxes delinquent that was collected in the month of December. So that will show for next month, but it is going in the account. Uh, we had state aid of a little over 684,000 that came in. Um, payments out, uh, most of it was tuition. We did pay off the tax anticipation note um, that was approved last month. The official warrant is in this packet, um, but that was paid last month um, based on the vote that was in last meeting, and that was for two hundred ninety-three thousand five sixty-one thirty. Um, right now, outstanding delinquent school taxes, um, as of the last report, is a little under forty-five thousand. It's forty-four and change um, for delinquent school taxes that I'm collecting. Uh, based on what Mary has told me prior, um, we're on track, or even a little bit better. Uh, than past years for delinquent taxes. Um, unless anybody has any other questions, that's all I have. No, that, that's the only question I would have asked you is about that number, and you just declared it. So. And uh, that's great. I assume that most of those taxes will end up being collected fairly shortly. Yeah, we only have, there's still just one parcel from the prior year, um, and it's a little over $2,000. So you know, based on that fact and, you know, from years past, I, I don't have any belief and I haven't heard any, um, you know, there's some that people have contacted me, they're making payments as they can, some they've had problems through escrow, things like that. So um, there, there's definitely some other ones that I've heard from folks. Um, so I don't have any reason to believe that we won't continue on a pace to, uh, to get those collected. So this shows 25 of delinquent taxes from 22, 23, 25, 32, 25, 33, really roughly, but collected. That so that so that report, that was the, the money that was deposited in the month of December. So those were November collections. Yeah. Okay. Because I collect through the month prior, then the deposit is made the following month. So next month's report will show a little over 25,000 that was okay. collected because right. taxes aren't late until November 11th. Um, 
So the amount that was collected for the month of November, which is on this treasurer's report, is the two thousand five thirty two seventy seven. Okay, great. Yep. And twenty five thousand next month. We'll see that. Okay. Great. Correct. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more. I just it's fresh in my mind because the the check was cut through the village warrant. All right. So um, just for curiosity's sake, on the refined payment of the TAN. T-A-N. Yep. 293. How much interest did we pay on that? Um, let me see. I don't know if I have the invoice right here. Was that? That's I believe it was. The, it's probably in I think it was the, I think it actually, Ray, I believe it was the, the 3,561.30 because I believe we advanced an even amount. So I believe we had advanced 290,000. So I think, I believe the 351. Uh, sorry, 356130, I believe. Was the interest. Interest. Okay, yes. thank you. Yep. Thanks very much. Doug. No problem. Uh, and then uh, we usually skip the budget status report. Consent agenda. We have minutes from November 16th, 2022, December 14th, 2022, and uh, the warrants. Uh, I'll describe the warrants. There's uh, one warrant that is uh, the tuition to the Southwest Vermont Union Elementary School. Um, total of 17 students. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, and we we would normally pay that on a three pay basis with the first payment being in September, but there was a, it, that was not ready to be paid because we didn't know how many, I think there was some snafu about students uh, numbers. I don't recall at any rate, it got postponed. So we're making a payment for two, two of those installments this month. Uh, and that totals, uh, uh, Yes, two hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars, roughly, for a total of seventeen students. And um, no, wait, no, the check is one hundred eighteen thousand. Sorry, I misread that. I included it twice there um, for those two payments that were were missed for the students. And then the village school tuition for January of 175,000 for 107 students. And the other warrant is the, uh, well, there's the warrant that you described the, to the bank for the tax anticipation line of credit that we had uh, for $293,561.30. Including that three three five sixty one thirty for interest, and uh, that's the two warrants that are included in this agenda, along with the uh, minutes from November and December. Uh, I entertain a well. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the consent agenda. Pass it. Um, Need a second, maybe. I'll second for you. Kiernan seconding. Any any questions or discussion of uh, minutes or the the warrants? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, aye. Aye. For me. So we'll move on to move on to superintendent's report, which. Do we have, is Renee here? Renee is here. Okay. Which is going to be Renee because she's going to talk about our budget. Hello, Renee. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm just like rushed back from the Arlington meeting. So I'm yep. trying to get right. single here and everything opened up that I, that I need to. Um, okay. 
So I do have uh, some changes from the draft one information that I sent out. Um, so I think, um, Katie, could you enable me to maybe be a co-host so I can um, share my screen? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think so, at least. We already have two co-hosts, so I'm not sure it's letting me have a third. Or just enable screen sharing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to do that. I thought I did. Is it in video settings? Um. I don't know, it's not coming up because it's just uh, only allowing me to see that it's disabled. <clears throat> no. Um, oh, wait, I think I got it. All right, try now. Yep, that worked. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Katie. No problem. Staying calm. <laughs> Okay, so can everybody see the North Bank? Yes. Okay. I don't know about everybody else, but I definitely can see it. Yes. Y yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the changes okay. from draft one, um, I did go just very quickly as soon as I just walked in the door, actually. I've updated the assessments based on uh, the current draft of the SVSU uh, budget. Um, so the, the first one, and, and these are all highlighted in green, um, just for my sake of ease of finding them within the, the line by line budget um, mm -hmm. to go ahead and update them. So the admin budget um, decreasing slightly from this current year uh, by about $1,500. We have not um, touched the contingency at the other highlighted item here. And uh, the I SP have a question about oh. the admin assessment, just... Just to verify that we're basically using the same methodology we did last year. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, so then scrolling down to the next uh, one would be the SVSU. Well, not the SVSU audit. It's actually the North Bennington audit, but it all flows through the SU. Um, that fee is remaining uh, steady for North Bennington. So that remains flat. Okay. Um, the HR assessment up just a slight tick, just less than $200. Tech admin up about $3,600. Uh, the assessment for the business office up about $750. And then I don't think we get to the rest of the assessments until, oh, there's your pre-K. So that's down almost $83,000. Uh, mainly because of the, the scale back on the number of students or the number of seats that we're budgeting for for pre-K. That was almost a $250,000 reduction in the SU budget. Um, so the corresponding mm -hmm. reduction for you here. And then the... So there's a general drop in expected pre-K students? Not necessarily. Um, it, it really is a, me kind of looking at um, the... Historically, we've been kind of budgeting for the maximum that we could potentially have based on our partner programs and the available seats that they had within their programs. And we've consistently had a surplus. Um, I think we're still going to have a, a buffer of about 20 to 25 potential incoming new students that we're not aware of. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I felt comfortable that we could scale back that we'll budget it down by, and by not, that. Yeah. Not end up with such a large surplus. Okay. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so then to jump back into that book. Um, and then the, the special education um, section down here in the green. So this year, um, North Bennington had a pretty hefty um, surplus for their special education costs. So we used that up. Um, and then so next year, we're kind of jumping back to similar to, you know, the expenses that we had before. 
um, still with, with somewhat of a surplus rolling in. Um, and now you reduce that to said I have 120 facing me, but on the screen it's 71 nine. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, with may I ask a question about that about the current uh, cost of services? Are I'm thinking in terms of our. Uh, actually, maybe I should save it, but I was I'll throw it out there. Um, because we're actually running into costs higher than that 752 budgeted for 2023. Are we uh, going to overall stay within our budget? I know we're above our special ed budget, but. Actually, I, I think I, I haven't looked at it probably within the last maybe five to six weeks, but based on the the projections that we had with the, the students that are in um, you know particular placements this year, I think we're still going to be okay. We might have just a very small buffer of maybe less than twenty thousand yeah, dollars. Not not a large fund balance, unfortunately. Correct. Yeah. No. I, I, stay, I stay think stay within our budget for this year. Great. Thank you. Hope, yeah. Hoping so. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but. Uh, oh, okay. So, and. Uh, so, if you put your screen back up there, here we go. So SPED admin, um, small increase, and then the triple E or special education portion of um, early ed, early child pro childhood program um, is a decrease. Yep. Yeah. Um, so overall, um, comparatively to draft one, um, you're at a 2.9 percent increase. But if we scroll back up um, to the students, I think I had mentioned this in the email that I sent out to everybody that as I started going through the, the current students um, that are tuitioning to various schools <clears throat> and factoring out the sixth grade and factoring in who we um, have identified as potential incoming kindergartners. Um, and then I compared that to what we had budgeted for this year was 159 students, mm -hmm. um, and we're at 154. So I, okay. that, that's actually a little bit higher than the actual numbers of students that we have. I just felt that if if I didn't put a you know a couple extra kids in there, that we might be behind the eight ball. So um, there are definitely some. So I think we. You know, for SVUESD, I think we technically have, you know, 18 on the rolls, but I have 19 here in the budget um, with an estimated tuition cost of, you know, the 14 five. Yeah, um, I think I, we have 17 that we just paid bills for for this year. Okay. And uh, sixth grade, I asked Jim for this, the sixth graders exiting SVUESD would be... Um, Three from this year at the end of this year. I don't know what would be coming in, of course, in terms of kindergarten from the pre K numbers. But so, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I think fine. the pre K, just based on the list that we had, um, looks like 18 potentially coming in. Yes. Uh, right. That's what it shows for pre K four right now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So essentially, based on you know the the student counts, I've added one or two to each of these. Just just so you know. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh, the Highland Hall estimate, which is the next block that shows up there, three students. That's based on. Uh, there is what did currently they have, five this year. Is, or, or is currently that, four. Four. Um, they're losing one. Yes. I think they're losing two. Two. Yep. I think yes, we have they're two, losing two. Okay. Two sixth graders. Yep. yep. Um, so I added one back in. Okay. Um, Southshire. We currently have fourteen going to twelve because you have two sixth graders there. Sixth graders, okay. um, but I yep. kept it at fourteen. Um, Village school. I think we currently have. 107 with 14 sixth graders, but potentially yep. 18 
Um, I, I put all your incoming kindergartners in here. So the 107 less 14 plus the 18 uh, gets you to 111, but then I bumped up a couple more too to keep you at 113. Okay. Um, Grace, we don't have anybody there presently, but we did have a budget this year. Yes. I mean, that is a potential place where you could. Yeah, I, I think we need a placeholder there. Uh -huh. uh, and two is okay. That seems reasonable for the moment. I have not heard anything from them the whole year except um, the student that students that were there last year, I think they were both from one family. You know, the family moved, so there was, I considered whether they were, had moved within the district, but they hadn't, so they didn't show up this year. And uh, I don't know of anyone new, so I, I could call them and find out before we settle this budget. But uh, I think it's good to have that placeholder for now. And then the Sacred Heart numbers, uh, we currently have uh, four, with two of those being sixth graders. Right. Um, but I kept it at three, just in case. Yeah. Okay. So then if right. we uh, jump over to your, um, these are the equalized pupil numbers, the most recent ones that we got from the Agency of Education. Right. Uh, they are considered frozen at this point. So I have the North Bennington numbers highlighted. And because North Bennington is part of the union um, of Mount Anthony, we have to blend the tax rate. So I do have the Mount Anthony most recent draft budget data here. However, um, I do suspect we'll see some reductions on that budget. Yep. Um, but taking into account, um, actually, let me jump back. So. You can see what your, your revenue stream is here. <clears throat> so on the revenue side, um, we do have an increase in your fund balance going forward. Okay. So that is helping that, to that's your That's your best estimate at the moment, 102 is not completely settled? Or it is, it's based on our unaudited FY22 financials, but yeah, I mean, it's, That's, you know. I take that to be pretty trustworthy since they rely on those figures when they do the audits. So. Yeah. Okay. So then um, having the 3091 as the education spending um, for the North Bennington graded school district and then blending that with the current Mount Anthony um, rate is how we get to these numbers. I just want to caution, I'm not sure if I put this in the email, but um, the the property yield uh, that came out from the tax commissioner in the December 1st letter um, by statute does have to make the assumption that the surplus that they've projected for the ad fund of excess of $60 million, they have to assume that that full amount is going to stay within the ad fund. Um, we know that you know the governor may have other ideas of use of that money. Um, we don't know if universal meals will tap into any of that money if the legislature decides to continue that um, going forward. So there there could be pressures on that, and if there is, that number could change as it does every year. Um, but we go with what you know that we have at, at this point in time. So um, using the the fifteen four seventy nine. Um, gets us down to a blended tax rate for next year, estimated a 1.67 for North Bennington, 1.36 for the Shaftesbury ID district. And you can see the projected increase and decrease. And, and really that's it's a tremendous function of the change in, in the common level of appraisal, um, right. which has triggered uh, most of the towns within the SVSU having to have a reappraisal yep. or reassessment done. Yep. yep. Jasper would not be affected by that at this moment. But uh, the rest of us are. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's like showing almost. Uh, just a little over 11%, 11 cents 
I'm sorry. Did you want me to keep that up? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's okay. Um, so I, you know, that that all looks pretty good, except for that final figure. <laughs> so uh, I think the issue for the board, since we do have some, as as Renee laid out, there are some. There's a little slot in the numbers for uh, different tuition locations. Um, whether we want to adjust that in any way. And um, the other potential slop is that the adjustment on uh, for inflation that was put in is, uh, you know, uh, or higher than what actually happens. Uh, the the SDUESD numbers are fixed based on what Renee has for a budget for them at the moment, and uh, for uh, the uh, state average is fixed for that year for next year as well. So that Southshire will take that number, and that's what's factored in there. So the question is. Um, how many students we have at uh, VSNB, Sacred Heart, uh, Grace, Highland Hall, and uh, pretty much it. Yeah. So I think the, if I ask all my questions here, I think so. What I accept that I didn't ask, what is their date to get this warning now uh, adopted? So it has to be posted, which means, uh, you know, we have to have everything done and approved. Um, yeah. So the posting has to happen between uh, no earlier than January 26th, no later than February 5th, which happens to be a Sunday. So I would say probably February 3rd, which is a that Friday of that week. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, of course, we don't know what, whether, I mean, you know, we've got a number in there for BSNB tuition. We don't know that number for, for certain yet. So, um, I guess we have a couple of questions to decide. Uh, do you think we will need a full meeting in addition to the actual adoption of warning meeting uh, or do you think we can get by with uh, that this is for the board not just Renee uh, I think we could get by with just uh, waiting to the warning and just uh, uh, dealing with changes within this overall footprint of the budget without having a meeting I don't know if we can do that or not but it seems like um, unless I, I guess I guess I'd like uh, normally we uh, because Lori tells us this is the best way to do it and I agree with her we normally continue this meeting and we have set certain dates if we cancel uh, can we set a date and then cancel it if we don't feel we need that date Lori I can't hear you yes you can do that but it's pretty okay. important to, you know, it's pretty important to list what you think you will be doing rather than add one in. You, that's a mess. Yeah, no, 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 right. So we we can prepare for having a meeting, and if we don't really feel we need it, we can just drop one for the and leave leave the final warning. Yes, date. correct. Okay, great. Um, so, um, yeah, the other thing is we usually we have a meeting with the village school and uh, we have a provision in our tuition contract to have a report on the status of things at, at that point. Um, so that would be the only, that would be the re reason for having that interim meeting in between now and the Drop dead warning date. So we could set a meeting 
Let's, why don't we work backwards from setting a meeting for adopting the final warning to be posted? Um, and that date was the 126. What day is that? What are we now? We're at the, the 11th. The 26th is a Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Are we the 25th today or are we doing the, that's a Wednesday, it's two weeks from today, or do you want to go with that Thursday? I think the 25th would be fine. We can't do it on the 25th. We have to wait till the 26th. Can we can we adopt it and then we yes. have to you can, you can, it you can adopt it ahead of time. It just can't 26th. be posted. Yeah, yeah. the posting okay. has to happen. So uh, yeah, 25th would be fine for the, the adoption date. And then maybe set up a, you know, like next Wednesday for the other potential meeting with the village school. Yeah, if, if that's okay with Tim and yeah, the rest that, of us. Yeah, that can work for me. I have to um, go out of town the following week. So if we can get it done next week, that would be very helpful from my perspective. So it would be the 18th? Yes. Right. Yes. I'll be out of town, but I can, I can zoom in or okay. probably not zoom in or call in or whatever. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure if the SVSU is actually going to be having their regular meeting. They they may on the 25th. Um, okay. So just to keep that in mind as a potential conflict in terms of. Right. Um, um, of course, we're we're actually adopting on the 17th the SU. Right. Is that correct? Uh, as I remember. He, he, that is what we tentatively have scheduled as a, a five o'clock for just the budget. Um, but Amy has not been able to successfully secure a quorum yet, so I'm not sure that's actually going to happen. Well, I said I would be there. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I know there was still a couple of people she hadn't heard from, so hopefully we'll be able to have five people. Um, for right, so the, that won't interfere with this meeting next week on the 18th. No, but I think with the um, superintendent evaluation, I think that the, the regular meeting might end up happening, but I, I don't know. You would probably know yeah, more about well, we that. Have, we have that meeting is scheduled for the 19th, so mm -hmm. that's not in the way either. Okay, so um, do all of you accept this? So all, all my board and Kim, is that okay next, next Wednesday at... Uh, uh, I mean, is 6.30 okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's fine with me. Karen, did you say you said something yes? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, right. yeah that's yeah. fine. I'm just putting it in the calendar right now. Okay. Matt, you can yeah, I'll, call I'll be out of town, but, but I'll call in or whatever we can do. Right. It probably won't okay. be a Zoom, right? Uh, no, it could be a Zoom, I think. We, we, you, Renee will be there, I think. Yeah, so we'll be able to put um, put the special meeting in the adjacent conference room yes, um, Wednesday because Mount Mount Anthony will be meeting in that room yep. um, at okay. this time. And you'll be at Mount Anthony most likely. I yep. guess I have a budget meeting with them from right. five. But yep. someone can be there to like Katie maybe or someone else. But it, but is this the meeting with with Tim regarding yes. tuition? Correct. That's the primary focus and if we know anything different from these numbers uh, that makes us think we could adjust maybe downward a little bit on some of the uh, allocations for students but great because that would help us on that number that 11 cent increase by dropping the overall spending in the budget that we have to finance through taxes. Okay. Is that it? Anybody else? I mean, it, that, I'm just setting this out here. And I'm, uh, if there, anybody thinks we should be doing differently, or I'm open to listening, we could adjust it. So, it, it seems uh, like in the I'll past we've met, we've met with uh, Tim or or the board um, of the village school independently to discuss this stuff. I don't, I'm. It's always been a warm meeting though. Okay. 
and this would be a continuation meeting of this meeting. So, All right. Um, I mean, we may have, we would have an executive session there to actually talk about details. I think of the contract number. But, um, I think it has to be in foreign meetings. I don't. I don't want to be a you know a stick in the mud, but I kind of want um, to see those numbers again from Renee. I feel like I didn't see the same thing that you saw, Ray, in the final tax rate. Um, it's eleven cents. That's what you what it had what was up on the screen. Eleven so cent Renee, increase. Renee I, could have. I, yep. I, yep, I, I can put it back up. It's about a four cent drop for Chasper. It's because their CLA is at 85 and ours at 69. So, did North Bennington North Bennington had a decrease this past uh, fiscal year, didn't they, or no? I don't remember. We last this current year, yes, we had a small drop in the tax rate. Yes. Yes. Jasperies was a little larger because their CLA is higher. Yeah. And it stayed uh, in a range that, where they don't have to reappraise. Whereas ours has dropped dropped to sixty nine percent. So what I'm seeing there is the estimated increase decrease. There's eleven cents. That's an increase. And then next to it is the four cent. What's that? That's Shaftesbury District One. Thank you. Okay. And so, what's the percentage of of tax increase? Um, estimated for North Bennington taxpayers? Um, um, the current one at Y23 was, that's what we reported. Uh, the actual rate was actually a little lower yet, um, is 156.28. So um, if we're going to, uh, sorry, what's, what's the total limit? 150, 156.28 plus 0.1109, 167.1569, 7% increase, 7, a little over 7% increase. Okay. And, and Shaftesbury is experiencing a decrease, even though their level appraisal is way yeah. before it used despite, to be. Despite the drop that they have there. Uh, in other words, if we had the same CLA we had last year, we would have a decrease. Right. Just like Shaftesbury's. It'd be, a, in fact, it'd be, if it were the same, exactly the same, it'd be a little bit higher in decrease. But, um, yeah, I, I still like to question how these numbers are calculated because they're coming from the town of Bennington's data. So that's something we could talk about. Uh, in fact, I was going to talk about it. Uh, the We do have until the 25th, I believe, to appeal the CLA determination. And maybe we should at least try to get information on what basis they made the determined. I mean, they, they, they have a set basis. It's not like they make these figures up. So we could at least look at the figures. Um, maybe Doug and I could sit down if we get some information. I, I haven't called the number. There is a, a person assigned to our area from the state to speak to about it and maybe i don't know renee is pretty busy so i'm not sure i would ask her to sit there with me to talk to this person but maybe doug could sit there with me and we could talk to this person and uh and ask for the data at least i, I mean i recollect public, right i recollect a number of years ago where it was clear that bennington was unilaterally deciding that a certain sale of a property was an outlier or some sort of anomaly and, and then toss in it. Yeah. Toss it out of the database. Yeah. So so the things that might have been sold cheaper 
they'd be like, well, we're, we're not in a cheaper, you know, market right now. So that's just. Oh, so they would. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, I don't know about that. I don't really either. You know, I, I'm sure they have a method and I'm sure it's all on the up and up, but. And I know why, you know, there's been a lot of sales much higher than appraised values and all that, but. Well, I, I think the, the process can be transparent and we can ask for the data just to see what it looks like. And uh, I will do that. I'm not sure what that entails, but I'll call them up and find out. And if I need help, I'll get it. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's yeah. great. Um, otherwise, I. I think this budget looks, unless, um, I'll, I'll go look at the administrative expenses we've got in that section of the budget. You know, we have, um, I need to talk to um, <clears throat> Mr. Marr about uh, what our costs for building expenses are likely to be given the projects we have, we talked about getting in the works As if we can maybe we can adjust the amount we have in the budget for building expenses um, since we do have a balance on hand right now in addition to what's in our budget currently that hasn't been transferred into that fund and the other thing is the ninety thousand dollars of contingency we have we could adjust that down we may be able to, I'm not sure, maybe I, that's one way we could look at some tweaks to this budget. Uh, we could drop the contingency backwards since we're building some contingency into the numbers for students and drop it back. Um, I can, I can, you know, I won't ask Renee to do that right now, but I can, uh, email her and ask for a scenario with a change in some of these numbers. So, so possibly we could drop the amount that we're going to have to spend on the building. Possibly we could drop the contingency amount some. And uh, uh, the only other thing I can think of that we could alter is change the numbers of students if we think that they're unreasonably toward the high end, uh, but. Did, did Renee speak to the the state not yet deciding exactly how much of this? Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's always, you know, the 15, was it 15, seven, 15, I forget what it is, like, we're not remembering. Uh, the 15,479. 15,479. That's what the tax commissioner says at doing a calculation that's written into statute. However, the amount that the legislature and the governor ultimately agree on as the uh, yield for a dollar worth of taxes, property taxes, uh, is subject to legislation, which is usually determined at the end of the session. And so it, it can vary. It can't go higher than that, I suppose, but it could drop depending on how they use the surplus that they have. And there was some reference on v, uh, VP today that spoke to that surplus and whether or not the governor would grab some of it or whether it would actually go right. to. Yeah, as, as uh, Renee said, you know, maybe some of it could go to. Uh, free and the you know the universal lunch meals program or maybe some of it could go somewhere else i know the governor has said made statements that he wants it all to go to the tax rate which would mean that it would stay where it is but the legislature may have other ideas and we don't know until they get around to discussing it you know, deciding it toward the end of the session. Yeah. Well, long before that, we have to have a vote on a budget. Yeah, so we have to make a decision on this stuff, and we'll have a vote on the budget before they're done. Um, 
And uh, I would like to reduce that 11 cents somewhat as, as much as we can deal with. As much as we can find to um, feel feel comfortable with in our skins with what we're voting on for a total amount, and, and you know the the numbers down at the bottom end there of the budget for like special ed services are all down except for the one the big one there is special ed services for a six which went up and that's because there's not as much surplus this year anticipated. But it's not, it's definitely in the realm of what it's been in our past history. And we can't do anything about that one because I'm, uh, so as I say, basically we can adjust numbers of students in K-6, we can adjust sinking fund, building maintenance, we can adjust um, the $90,000 contingency amount and the rest of it, I would not alter anything because they're either known or they're just too small to do us any good anyway. And we usually have expenses in the areas in which those are uh, that money is set into the budget. Agreed. Okay. So, um, so I will explore the uh, basis for our CLA drop. I, I would say that just about every district in the state has seen this. Definitely. They're not unusual. And the only question is whether it was the uh, what the data says uh, will actually su support that, or if there's something we can complain about and file a, a request for an adjustment. And someone will have. I, I'll need some advice on that because I did. I read the the uh, report, the CLA letter, and I did not understand what. The terms of reference were in certain cases, <laughs> so I'll uh, need help from the uh, person right. who's supposed to help us. Yeah, um, yeah and if if it's of any like just a, a reference point, I just came from Arlington, mm -hmm. and their CLA is now down to eighty seven point seven five, and they just went through a reappraisal in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. They have, they have some reason to be really upset, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ours, you know, our reappraisal, what, you know, we're, how many years since Bennington did a reappraisal? 16 or something? 2008. Like that? It says 2008. 2008, yeah. So that's 14 years ago. Yep. At the height of the, of the depression, you know? Yeah. All right. So well, um, the argument the argument would be in two thousand and eight, you could be at the peak or you could be at the valley. Right. Could have been at the peak before the valley came. Right. Right. So you don't know exactly where it hit. So it could be just saying two thousand and eight for a housing market doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be on the plus or the minus side. Yeah. Um, so if they're trying to compare apples to apples again, and you're your outliers are potentially going to be your issue because if they're throwing out the low sales, are they throwing out the high sales too? If they're not throwing out the high sales, then you can't throw out the low sales. It, it doesn't make any sense. You can't, you can't have it both sides. If you're, if you're yep. considering a low and outlier, you have to consider a high and outlier. Right. And, and uh, that's what I have to find out is how they're doing it. Right. 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 And the other, right. Because the other, the other piece of the puzzle is, do they have, you know, is it just recorded sales data, meaning what's reported, not necessarily what's, you know, if it's over asking price, if there's concessions and things like that, I don't know what else they take into consideration. 
So who locally do, do we talk to about that? Is it is it the appraisers or is it uh, the, the town clerk? We're advised to call the, uh, I guess it's a state treasurer's office. There's 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 an ombudsman that we call to contact. The number is on the letter. Let me uh, look at that. So, um, Jill Remick, Director of Property Valuation and Review, says, we're aware many towns are concerned about the change in the market due to the effects of COVID. Sales have generally increased in price. And uh, as a result, there are more towns experiencing large drops in their CLA. Um, there will also be many more reappraisal orders going out to towns than in typical years. So if you have concerns about your results, you should talk with your district advisor. I didn't know we had one about what the best plan of action might be for your town. So, and there's a number listed for that district advisor. And that's the first I intend to call. And uh, if I need some assistance sorting this out, I'm going to ask Doug to help me because I, you understand it more, much better than I do, Doug, <laughs> just based on what you just spoke, said in this meeting. Yeah, I, I can, I can, you know, do the best and, and go from there. But yeah, though, I, I think if they can give us an explanation as to where their calculation comes from, um, because the the caution would be um, is if you if you do a reappraisal right now, you're again almost at the height. Because I can say with certainty that appraisals are coming down. They're going to be dropping. Well, yeah. oh, I know they're already dropping because I see it in my job. <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, so that that indicates that if we just, you know, we can slow walk the reappraisal and see right. where things get to, and maybe it ends up not being such a big adjustment. Right, because I, I again, I mean, two thousand and eight is definitely a long time, but that being said, the market right now needs to self correct in order for it to be fair and equitable because that's yeah. what a reappraisal or reassessment is supposed to be fair and equitable yeah, yeah that's at right. the end of the day i believe you're supposed to have a third go up a third go down and a third stay the same as how it's supposed to wash out right um you know and then what that does to the grand list is a different story because you don't know what third's going up what third's going down and what third's staying the same um right. but everybody knows what the market looks like right now so if if you jump in with both feet and it hasn't self-corrected you're, you're gonna have you know you're gonna put a lot of work on you know folks that are gonna have to do the grievance hearings and all those types of things yes indeed so you know the term i don't understand in the paragraph that talks about the coefficient of dispersion because that's the basis on which this adjustment in our COA occurs. We have a coefficient of dispersion. Actually, it's less than Shaftesbury's, but it's, I think, uh, what is it? Yeah, 2138 for Shaftesbury, 2173. It's just slightly more than Shaftesbury's uh, dispersion coefficient, but that's dropping us from about 88% of fair market value to 69%. And uh, whereas Shaftesbury's, our, their CLA last year was well over 100. So the drop is only to 85%, 85%. Yeah. So it's, it refers to a median ratio. And I, that left me like a median of what? <laughs> I don't know what, what that refers to. And it's a ratio, so it's a two things at least. So I'm unclear about that. So I'll have to talk to this 
advisor for that information. And uh, I, it's, it should be all public record, so I don't see any problem in getting the, the data that they're using and the calculations they make for us to look at. And Doug, I just forwarded you the, the CLA letters. Okay. Yep, I just, I just popped up on my phone. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, so Ray, that's fine. If you want to give them a call, I'll read through that letter in the next couple of days. Right. Um, but if you want to, you know, see if they... I, I think what I'm going to ask them for is the data and the calculations. Because right. public records, so they, they should send it to us. And, and uh, we'll look, and I'll, I'll get that and I'll forward it to you and the rest of the board if they want. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if we want to make any moves right. right because then if we have questions because the letter is the letter but if they if they then give us the information then we can decide if we have further questions right. either we can you know set up a conference call with them you know set up a zoom you know i don't know whatever however they handle things i'm guessing they're not in person so i'm assuming yeah. it would be some sort of a conference call right so it it's i think we have is it 35 days from the date of this letter. Correct. It. That's the 22nd. The yep. So that's, that's, I think, about the 25th of January, somewhere right. And unfortunately, the, the letters that I, I sent you all were just scanned copies, so the links aren't live, but right under the table on the first page, it says for a copy of your town final computation sheet and final certified sales report, there's a link. That you said oh, okay. the data is probably all posted. Um, oh, okay. So, so I don't even have to talk to this person. I can just look at this data and maybe. Um, yeah, I haven't. I haven't been to the Doug, website. Doug can look at it. You could. Okay. You could. You could order it up from the letter. Doug. Yep. That link, and then we could talk about whether we need whether it's a case to be made. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Like I said, in the next couple of days, and see Thank what I can yeah. see what I can see. All right. So, um, what we need to do then is we need to uh, have a motion for a continuation of this meeting, and we'll specify the dates of January eighteenth and January twenty fifth. Uh, so moved. So, um, actually. Do you want to do it that way, Ray, or would you like to continue your meeting on the 18th? To the 25th. Well, uh, I don't have to separately warn the, those that meeting if I just continue it now and to include both of those dates. Is there a reason why you think it's more advantageous to do it that way? To have a separate uh, warning for the 18th? So, um, no, you can do it this way. If, if you prefer to do it this way, it's fine. Okay. So, uh, and they're both for the purpose of budget discussions, correct? Uh, yes. For the purpose of budget discussions, yes. And, uh, and for warning the budget, for warning the annual meeting. All right, so uh, uh, Matt made the motion. Did I get a second? I will second it. Thank you, Kim. Uh, any further discussion or comments about it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, I really don't have anything else to. Uh, so Ray, I have one thing to ask you. <clears throat> um, have you notified the the people that we've been getting, um, the people at the state level, we've been getting um, letters with the incorrect address delivered to other I, residents? I thank you for reminding me. I will have to mention it to the supervisor. Okay. Because it was sent totally incorrectly. 
So you're going to take care of that or do you want me to? Can you take care of it? Um, yeah. Do you want to? Sure. I mean, I, I, if, if I have to speak to this person anyway, like- Why don't you person. take care of it then? Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, that's the address, the letters are actually misaddressed, is that? Correct. So I think there's two or three, all related to the same thing, all with the incorrect address. I'm not even sure why they have that address. Do we, and that address is on the screenshot you sent me? Correct? It is, but it's. I also left you those envelopes in your mailbox at okay. the village school. I'll get them before I call this guy. Yep. All right, our lady, whomever it is. Um, so uh, we voted on the resolution for continuation to the 18th and the 25th for budget discussions and warn and uh, warning of the annual meeting of the district. And uh, uh, no, having no other business that I know of to speak to, uh, unless someone has a, another to us in here, I will. Uh, adjourn the meeting and thank you renee for for uh, the report and i i I'll, seems I like will, you did, that's a great job it seems to me. thank you i'll send the hard copy out um via email to everybody and i'll have amy post it and then i also have uh the warrant to put into docusign that i'll get out um okay thank you. yeah so uh i'm gonna declare us adjourned good night thank you Night. Or Renee. Oh, she's gone. Shoot. Well, I can write her if you want. Oh, well, you know, the only thing I wanted to ask um, was, so Renee, as usual, will take care of um, the the posting when we're, um, uh, when Our we're meeting. finished, yeah. correct? Yeah. Then I will have that to bring to, um, or to to scan for the printer, but I'll I'll talk to Renee before that. For the warning anyway. itself, okay. you're you're taking uh, for the annual meeting more. Correct. You know, after Renee has to send send it all to us yeah. to sign anyway, and because I can it, ask her. It comes from the attorneys. Yes. Comes right. From the SU attorneys. Correct, and then I'll get it to for the ballots or for yes. the yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, Bye. Bye-bye. CAT TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.